the rainy season arrives, equaling more outbreaks of malaria and more children dying. A market day is happening in Dokolo, in the northeastern part of Uganda. It will draw over 600 people from the sub-county of Bata. Among these people will be Kevin Ogwang. Kevin, a local health monitor, is looking to buy a product that, if found by police, would be deemed illegal. She has, on previous occasions, visited the same market and allegedly bought government-supplied coatem drugs from a vending stall manned by men whom Kevin says were not qualified medical personnel. There are these open market on the table here, you know, uh, drugs that you buy, like there are these commercial, like the one you call, uh, is it flu, flu, flu fed? Those ones are not prescription medicines. They can be sold in the retail shops and where in the open market, no problem. But there are those prescription drugs, like the antibiotics, the class A drugs, those ones you cannot sell in the open market. And especially if you are not a qualified person. Coatem by health standards is classified as a class A drug that can only be dispensed from a qualified medical personnel and in a clinic or hospital. The drug, even by its own inscription at the back and on pellets within it, is labeled not for sale. Coatem falls under the national list of essential drugs that is authored and approved by the National Drug Authority. The drug, produced in Uganda, caters to over 40% of all outpatient cases that are checked into hospitals. Singly, Coatem is the most consumed Class A drug supplied by government to health centers. The reasoning behind its supply is simple. Malaria contributes 25% of all hospital admissions every year. 14% of these die while still in hospital. The Ministry of Health in 2013 alone estimated that over 100,000 deaths were occurring as a result of malaria and malaria-induced illnesses. For this reason, malaria drugs are given out free of charge at hospitals. However, a growing black market of the drugs in the northern part of Uganda is forcing a scarcity in hospitals. The dose I'm holding in my hand right now treats an adult of malaria for an entire three days. This dose would not be possible for Ugandans to access if it was not for the wonderful and commendable work of these police officers who stopped the drugs which were on their way out of Uganda at the Lier border. These drugs have been found at Arua District Police, Central Police Station, and there are 9.8 million worth of drugs in here right now that are meant for the Ugandan public. This is an assortment of drugs worth over 9 million shillings lying in the police station in Arua. On the weekend of our travel to Arua, police had arrested two businesswomen crossing the border to Congo with the drugs. The drugs ordinarily have the capacity of serving an entire health center for. We are now in Lira town, going to meet a lady who has information on the purported sale of government drugs in the open market. We are hoping to find some people who are selling drugs in the open market in Lira. A Pioling market is the market that you see in the background. In that market, we have been able to see drugs being sold on the open market, but we've not yet been able to prove if they are government drugs. 
at the second time we went to purchase the drugs we were told that the person selling them has gone away we are not sure where they have gone but we were able to see and record video footage of the first time when we encountered this man selling drugs on the open market we are also not easily identifiable if this man is a physician and if indeed he is allowed to sell these drugs in the market Uh, there is uh, out there people say um, drugs are being sold, definitely drugs are being sold mm. in the open market mm. in places within the world. About the drugs being sold in the open market, uh, we particularly got um, intelligence information from Ajia Sub County in Ajia Market. Uh, there was a particular woman who would come in in the evenings and sell the drugs and move in the communities stealthily because she knows that uh, she's not allowed to sell UG drugs in the market. Uh, we followed this woman for quite a long time, two, three months, using our monitors. And finally, she was caught ready-handed with the coatum drugs, especially from malaria. And um, using the support of the sub-county police, she was captured and taken to the sub-county. And when she was questioned, Actually, it was discovered that she was moving from another sub-county to Ajia to sell and then disappear in the evening. So um, we actually reported this to Aku, and I think that is it. And then um, Arua being on the border, we cannot rule out uh, government drugs moving into Congo. Um, although we are not mandated to work in Congo, but through our contacts, relatives and so on, we know that uh, coatem is being sold in the open market in Congo as well. And even mama kits, the UG mama kits, they are being sold across the border. So um, in a dialogue at the district level, we try to discuss this and see uh, how can we stop you know, the moving movement of drugs, Ugandan drugs, into Congo and being sold in the open market. And uh, various, you know, uh, people discussed, people discussed, but I know that it is difficult because it's not only the drugs which go there, so many goods go, people smuggle them, so that is the information we have. To date, a total of 22,873 cases have been registered in the 10 districts, and they have also recorded 162 deaths in the health facilities and in the communities. The Minister of Health says the epidemic has hit the district of Lamo, Kulu, Kitgum, Oyam, Agago, Amur, Kole, Noya and Padei. The number of malaria cases in these districts has increased over tenfold and data so far collected indicates Kitgum is the most affected. 162 deaths have been recorded over the past three months. Eka kero musao, nese jine titunga kere o chaloka. Eswama yengo aswam nwa down e park Nepal. Ikor ikari tomon kwana engara engo aswamuna aidar ekare aja sengo kede idwe ikanyape ekea ne ngara kite engo idwe aja sengo kede ekea le downa park ituma le somaete adeki snap pugan eja inekinete engo ekoatem. Konye arai ema mete isirigin, mame jai kinete ingo. The cafeteria is being sold outside. Sometimes it used to be there, yes. 
but nowadays it's, it's really rare unless if it is linked. Why am I saying unless if it is linked? Because these people nowadays they know that you go to the field. They actually try as much as possible to hide it. That's why the NDA actually came in and uh, like when we're going for operations, we don't just stop by checking around the, 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 the drugs which are displayed in an open place. We have to go further to check even the places which we, where we suspect that drugs can be hidden. Where uh, a Wally Wisher just came and gave us that information that these drugs I've mentioned are in the open market. But by the time we reached there, I think these people also have their own monitoring, you know, monitoring styles. By the time we surrounded that market, everything has gone. A pony o kamone ngo adope a pack bon konye a bon attach ilukumin a kaisa kani bon. Mame ngo asisiat konye ebunenenti tunga. Oreka Adumon Amokan. Many of these people, the culprits, the culprits are not trained medical practitioners. They are not trained medical practitioners and they, many of them don't have even operational licenses and uh, others don't have uh, uh, others don't have uh, certificate from recognized uh, medical, medical institutions.